As a Canadian, Mexico is a place that most people I know have visited, but almost nobody I know has ever rented a car or driven in Mexico. When I tell people I've driven in Mexico, they look at me like I'm a lunatic and assume that venturing inland in Mexico would mean certain death. But really I'm just so pale that sitting on the beach really isn't in the cards for me, and I need to get up to higher elevation and cooler temperatures, and for that I need a car. Now people seem to forget just how big Mexico is. Maybe because those of us who live north of Mexico tend to only think of Mexico as like three different beaches. My driving experience in the country is limited to the area around Mexico City and Guadalajara, but I think it's enough to give you some advice which should be applicable in most of the country. Now, assuming that you're renting a car, your journey will likely start out online. Browsing for rental car options, your first impression might be that renting cars in Mexico is very cheap, but like most things in Mexico, there's a catch. Usually these advertised prices don't include mandatory third-party liability insurance, which increases the initial price considerably. I emphasize the term mandatory, as it's highly unlikely that your personal auto insurance includes any sort of coverage in Mexico. And it's even more unlikely that you'd convince the rental car company that you just don't need it. Also, credit card auto insurance doesn't typically cover third-party liability, just damage and theft to the vehicle that you're renting. So they're going to be tacking on a charge for third-party liability, and it's best that you not fight it too much. Last time I rented a car in Mexico, I got upgraded to an SUV, which is really nice for driving on the highways, but made driving and parking in Guadalajara much more stick sketchy. The side streets in Guadalajara seem to resemble Europe more than Canada or the USA, so if you're going to be driving in the big cities, consider what size of vehicle you actually need. So finally, while I was renting the car in Puerto Vallarta was fairly simple, renting a car in Mexico City as somebody who only speaks rudimentary Spanish is quite difficult. The guy at the counter was very friendly, but didn't understand any English really. And so it was really a kind of nerve-wracking signing the paperwork, but only understanding the numbers. The autopistas leading into and out of major cities are pretty comparable to highways in the US or Canada. I found that on these highways, locals will often be driving well in excess of posted speed limits. Now I tend to stick to the speed limit, especially on a divided highway, since I have experience dealing with police who don't speak English, and I can tell you conclusively that it's worse than renting a car from someone who doesn't speak English. Toll booths are common on the highways, and many don't accept credit cards, so be sure to keep some pesos on you. I found that the toll booths could range from the equivalent of a dollar or two all the way up to 10 or 15 dollars. Also, if they issue you a receipt, hold on to it for the day. Sometimes there are booths that verify that you paid your toll, and all you need to do is give them the receipt from the previous booth. This wasn't obvious to me, as I'm sure the signage wasn't in English, and I was just more concerned about getting into the correct lane. If it's just a one-lane highway, I'll tend to go a little faster than the speed limit if it means fewer people trying to pass me in the oncoming lane. I don't like kind of forcing every car behind me to feel like they need to go around me, so I'll go a little faster if it means fewer people have to try and pull dangerous maneuvers to get around me. One thing I noticed in Mexico City was that sometimes a boulevard was separating traffic which was flowing in the same direction on both sides of the boulevard. It's not something I've encountered before, and it threw me off when I would make a right turn and not realize that I turned onto the wrong side of the boulevard. This clip here shows me miscalculating on that front and having to make a less than smooth correction. It wasn't my finest moment. Occasionally in Mexico City, it seemed as though there were four-way intersections which had no stop signs or signal lights in any direction. This intersection here really only has traffic coming from two directions since both streets are one-way traffic. However, as far as I can tell, neither side has a stop sign. I don't know what the protocol is other than proceed with caution, yield to the driver who likely lives there and knows their way around, and don't cheap out on your insurance. This roundabout in Guadalajara with six exits might be as close as you can get to the nightmare of Parisian roundabouts in North America. It's a bit stressful, but it rewards aggressive driving, and if you can get through it without doing an extra lap, you'll feel like a champ. One scam I was made aware of in Mexico was where if you pull up to a service station, the pump attendant may not reset the, the fuel meter from the previous customer, which ends up in you paying for your own fuel plus the amount that the previous customer paid for as well. So some pump attendants, in my experience, would make a visual display of resetting the pump in order to make you feel more at ease, and I'd usually reward these very honest pump attendants with a tip. Thanks for watching. I'm far from a pro when it comes to Mexico, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to help you out. Also, let me know if you have a favorite driving story from Mexico. Thanks again for watching, and take care.